biodynamic is really the scientific agriculture. And that came across to me when I got a hold of Steiner's agriculture course and I read the first lecture and it brought me back to something that had occurred to me in my education. I had taken astrophysics at the same time that I studied uh, quantum physics. And it's the belief in quantum physics that it doesn't work on the macro level, that it doesn't explain things very well when it comes to large scale uh, systems. But it certainly describes what happens at the atomic particle level. You know, your subatomic particles. Anyway, when it came time to sign up for my courses and I put down I wanted to take astrophysics along with this and my faculty advisor said what do you want to take that for? Astrophysics, that's the business majors take that. That's a, you know, that's not really a serious course. And I said, well, if I'm going to study elementary particles, then I want to study quasars. Because it didn't make sense to me to just study one end of the spectrum, study the other end too. <laughs> so he said, you've already got more electives than anybody else I know. And he says, if you keep doing this, he says, you'll never graduate. Well, that turned out to be prophetic. I never graduated. Uh, <laughs> but I sure had the semester hours. Oh, boy. I was senior class senator for like three semesters. I turned it over to my alternate because it wasn't right. You know, this is supposed to be getting experience, you know? Well, if I was the senior class senator in perpetuity, well, then nobody else got any experience. So. Anyway, here I am studying quantum physics and the professor is explaining that in quantum physics, everything is a unique event. And even though on the larger scale, it's about probability that each event is unique and that if Quantum physics would explain that all of the air molecules out here on the porch could all end up over here in the corner for a moment or two. Because the most improbable things happen as part of the probability picture. So really extraordinarily improbable things are happening all the time. So all the air molecules could just all clump up in the corner of the room for a moment or two. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, oh, okay, but there's certain rules. You've got quantum numbers and every particle has a quantum number. And even though nobody's ever solved Schrodinger's equations, everyone agrees that they are really a description of what goes on. I'm thinking about this. And at the same time, in astrophysics, we're studying Bode's law. And Bode's law is a mathematical description of where the planets are from the sun. How far is Mercury and Venus and the Earth and Mars and Jupiter and whatnot. And Bode's law predicts there should be a planet in the asteroid belt, but there's just asteroids. And if you go back into the, uh, into the stories, like the tr traditions behind our cultures, then there was a time when uh, Prince Satan 
like sailed into the solar system and started working on things in the solar system and the archangel Michael got in a fight with him and so he bested Satan but at the price of destroying the planet that was in between Jupiter and Mars. So our lore, our tales of the story of the evolution of the Earth has an explanation for the asteroid belt. Astronomy doesn't have any real explanation for that. But all of the planets are at particular places that the mathematics predicts they should be. And I'm thinking how similar this is to quantum physics and how the different levels where an electron can be in its ground state or in the first excited or second excited or etc. state. These are all the places where it's resonant and it doesn't cross the distance between a lower state and a higher state. It just ceases to exist in the lower state and then takes a quantum leap to become there at the higher state. It can't exist in between those two states because they're not resonant states. And I'm thinking of the, you know, in class, I'm thinking of the similarity between this and Bode's law in astronomy. And I raised my hand in class and I asked the professor, do these rules of coherence and resonance and, you know, the rules of quantum physics that seem so strange and counterintuitive, do they just apply to elementary particles? And my professor grinned and he said, no. He said, if the universe is made up of these elementary particles, then these rules apply to every level of the universe. And it was like a light bulb as bright as the sun came on in my cranium. And I thought, oh, astrology is valid. I thought astrology, which is an interpretation of the relationships between the various planets at any given time and place, and the constellations and everything, that it's an explanation of this, an interpretation of it. And I thought it was utter like, you know, this was pablum for people with weak minds. People that didn't have you know, they had too much time on their hands and not enough things to do. And I thought, astrology, you know, you read the newspaper horoscopes and they're so general and you could interpret them and say, oh yeah, right, this is my horoscope and it sure explains me and so on and so forth. But it could explain almost anybody. But properly calculated a horoscope, if one did the mathematics, not the newspaper variety, then it's very specific. And I realized that it was a valid and probably very accurate interpretation. And I thought, holy smoke, astrology is valid? I was so surprised to think that. I went out and got a textbook on astrology and learned to cast horoscopes and interpret them. <laughs> so when I ran into, into biodynamics and Steiner is explaining in his first lecture how we human beings are rather emancipated from these day-to-day -day influences of the sun and moon and planets against the starry background. But plants 
are completely embedded in the here and now. And this really affects plants and to some extent animals. But human beings were so divorced from that that we can choose to ignore it and it works okay. And I thought, wow, astrology is valid. And here is an agricultural method that takes it into account and explains it. And I thought, my goodness, if you understood the mathematics of astrology, then you'd have to think that biodynamic agriculture was really scientific. I mean, really scientific. It's the first time I had ever had anything like that connect up so completely with my scientific education. And I know this wouldn't be true for most people. Most people would see that and without that kind of background and not having had that cognition in quantum physics class and not gone and gotten a textbook on astrology and learned how to do it, that you might think, oh, well, that's sure, that's, that shows you how much a bunch of nuts these biodynamic people are. Because they're depending on the actual constellations and the actual position of the sun and moon and planets against the starry background and what a lot of horse manure that is. But I had already had the realization that astrology was valid. And so for me, it was the most scientific form of agriculture I'd ever encountered. And it just made, it just made so much sense.